angel of the waters, the fountain of purification and healing, where all things can be born anew. That's what dreams are. They're the one thing that connects us all. Your desire to understand the thoughts of this being have awoken it from whatever was binding it. Okay. I want to take out my little hair styling comb and start going at these tails, trying to get the tails out. Oh, oh, tail! Oh, tail! Oh, tail! Oh, tail! My children, uh, you have a new fucking non-douchebag king now. The rat king defeated, you hold his crown in your hands. Something came and tore me off. The rat king was there and he dragged me away, but... But it wasn't the rat king else, that tore you off? No. To tear me off of that fountain, you would need powerful magic. What were we doing? The wedding! <laughs> back to the unsleeping city. My name is Brendan Lee Mulligan. Here are intrepid heroes. Say hi, intrepid heroes. Hi, intrepid heroes. Oh, gosh. Uh, last we left our brave adventurers off, they were deep in a cistern, covered in grime and mold and muck, fighting against the Rat King himself. Yes. Uh, being victorious over the Rat King, now holding the crown of the Rat King, you guys liberated M. The Angel of the Waters, the statue My of the Festive Fountain. Your girl, uh, who cleans you guys off, heals you. Uh, an incredible bit of dream magic from uh, Pete waking M up. Uh, and she flew off back to Bethesda Fountain. You guys are in your nice wedding duds, drenched but sweet smelling with a little bit of help from M, <laughs> uh, purifying you guys of all the filth and shit and piss. Uh, what do you guys do here in the sewers? Um, Wait, let's take a look at this crown. Is this crown? Yeah, yeah. I think I was wearing it. Oh, right. Yeah, you guys want to? Uh, yeah, let's check out what it is. You this? can keep wearing it. I mean, we. If, yeah, you, you guys want like to? I'm really little. Like you guys it. can just look at my head. Um, <laughs> look at my head. What Kingston, is this thing? Kingston, Kingston, weren't you talking about that guy who um, puts valuable things up his butt? Oh yeah, uh, oh, uh, yeah. yeah it's, fine. it's that guy who comes in here all the time. Yeah, there's uh, a guy who comes into the hospital a lot who puts stuff up his butt. I'm yeah. saying we could... Do you could... think it came out of his no. butt? I don't think you <laughs> could fit a crown of that. That's not my point. My point is maybe he might have some perspective on Lowell. Uh, can I do yeah, yeah, a, to like Lowell. a wisdom check or something on it? Uh, you want to do an insight check onto the crown? Yeah. Be my guest. Sweet. Oh, 24. Ooh. 24. Very cool. Uh... Murph, do you have the card over I there? I do. Uh, you get a bead on this and get the sense that, yes, this is a magical crown. Whether or not it's been up a single individual's butthole <laughs> is hard to say. All right. all right. In all likelihood, given the state of wear and tear on the crown, this thing could have been up any number of buttholes. Um, I used to do uh, I used to do colonics at the salon. Can I do an insight check to see Sorry, if it's been you up? Have a salon I was just trying colonics? to see if it was magic, <laughs> but do you want to see if it's... it is? Uh, it is very magical. Got it. Yes. Hey, can we get out of this dirty ass sewer? I can. Can we? Put, uh, we can have this. There might be some more cool stuff. I just started going through. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, all right, let's go. Cool. I can't Oh my God. Uh, all of you guys head tromping out of the sewers. Uh, you arrive back, uh, having been dried off through the long period of coming down through the sewers, maybe a little bit of magic here and there to help, because you get out and it is freezing cold. The sun has oh. since set. It is December in New York. Little strips of snow hang out here and there, but snow often doesn't hang around, even if it stays cold in New York for very long. Mm -hmm. um. You arrive in the manhole cover that you exited from back near the ramble where you can presume that the reception for the wedding is just beginning, and you see Bethesda Fountain cracked in half. There is a blasted streak of soot and ash across it, and you see M there on her knees looking at the fountain, tears running down her face. Uh, oh, go. I mean, I run to yeah. help her. I say, you know what? Honestly, I have, I have fixed worse hairdos than this. You see, she sort of laughs a little bit to herself and says, "I, I don't understand. I've guided this fountain since it was put here, at the beginning of the park. I was the guardian of the waters. I was with the Rat King the whole time." It couldn't have been him. 
Why did you have to guard it to begin with? Who would you be protecting it from? <sighs> she looks down and says, New York can be a tough city. There are a lot of odds stacked against the average person here. This fountain represented a change in the course of the city, both in terms of I was modeled to look like, you know. A million bucks. Thanks. <laughs> you see, she says, I was modeled after a washerwoman, not a, not a member of the aristocracy. This place was supposed to be a fountain to bring people joy. I was supposed to guard the healing waters here. And, you know, they hired a woman to design me. That's a big you deal. You can right? tell. Me. You can tell. You've got a woman's touch. touch. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Um, it's awesome. <laughs> you a feminist? Yeah, I think that's great. <laughs> I am a feminist. I oh definitely God. have to interrupt this. Um, okay. Uh, in, <laughs> what was, so you said healing waters. What was like the significance? Because I remember I had that vision where the baby told me My that baby. people come here with dreams. Everyone came here with a dream. Oh, Is this... People have been coming here with dreams for 400 years. Yeah, that's true. What year did the Bethesda Fountain get installed? One second. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to put you on the spot real quick. Yeah, what do you yeah. make? Your dome. What do you make? Yeah, I, mean, I can tell you, specifically I can tell you the, the reason I'm asking. I can tell you the reason I'm asking, because maybe you don't even need to do I it. I actually do know, and okay. it was 1864. Mm. 1864. How old are you? Lady never. Uh, How, Sophia. Um, Excuse you, yeah. Well, I, we're all comfortable here. I'll say how old I am. I mean, look, was I here in 1964? Sure, absolutely. I'm kind of Do you remember agree. getting installed? Uh, Is there after like so a... many lifetimes, one just forgets. Okay. See that uh, M says, the point I'm trying to make is this. To answer your question, the waters that were put here were meant to be a source of divine magic in the city. And anytime you have a city like New York that's very cosmopolitan, it tends to tap into a divinity that is neutral for everybody. And there are ways to abuse that if you're not careful. These waters are not only about healing, they're also about purification. People can come here and anoint themselves, start a new life. I can't tell you how many times someone's walked through this park and come by this fountain and decide to turn around for the better. But in a concentrated dose, it could also be used to purify, I don't know, anything. Whoa. Like something evil? Uh, yep. Like someone who was on the naughty list. Someone who escaped. Can I do an inside check, like, to look for clues around this, like, fucked up fountain? Uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I would also like to do that. What was that face you made when I said naughty list? Uh, I got a 25. 25? Hell yeah. Um, uh, you scoop some of the soot off of the thing. Uh, you've been around a long time. Smell it. Um, this <laughs> soot is not burnt stone or wood. This is old cremated flesh. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> uh, congrats. Hey. Oh, hey. What's, what's that? Uh, this is a person. Who? Oh. Uh, th this is not the, this is the cremated ra remains of, of, uh... Oh, uh, my God. I take somebody out a ritual. In, somebody got I take out a, a, a bunch of, like, bags of coke and dump them out, and then can I collect like, some of these remains? Like to oh, like, in, 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 like to get a like a, a sample. I flip it inside oh out. Oh my and god! Then I put... The ultimate sacrifice. Yeah, uh, I mean, remember, it almost all got ruined. In a way, this is all. I mean, Wait, here, do you, you guys want to do something? Are you going to snort no. some kind of dead demon person? No, no, I want to no, keep it so like that we can it's test like it. It's like evidence. Yeah. Oh, right. I thought we were going to snort it. I was going to say, I'll do it with you. Oh, Congrats, you can have some grass. glow if you want. Honestly, I don't, I don't blow, touch I this wanna, stuff anymore. I kind of want to know what happens if I snort the guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't I'm think that's right. I'm a rat. I'm this sorry. Is, that's not a rat thing. It's <laughs> not. I'm the rat king, okay? Hey, gang, wanted to give a huge shout out to this episode's sponsor, Reroll. Reroll is an app 
available on iOS, Android, and web browsers that lets you create and customize your D&D characters in pixel art. They have a huge selection of options to create pretty much whatever you have in your mind's eye. And they're adding new armors, items, and outfits all the time. We went ahead to see if we could recreate some D20 characters in Reroll, and they turned out pretty nice. But don't take our word for it. Check it out for yourself by going to reroll.co and sign up for an account at once! And now, back to the show. The point is, these are not recent remains. These are the ages. ancient remains. But well, maybe we can do body. some sort of test. I don't oh, know. Absolutely. I'm just I bet Emma I agree. I think this is a good move. Okay. I think that's Wait, a really good have... I have like Let's three bags ashes. of remains. Uh, Little. Young man, I know that you're uh, new to this, but. Mm. Don't you have some kind of detect magic as a sorcerer? What is that? Yeah, yeah, I do. Should I? Uh, I can ask to be able to use that. I guess. <laughs> um, absolutely. Um, uh, you, uh, you do have detect magic, don't you? I do have detect magic. I just don't know how I would. Oh, oh no, I have detect it. thoughts. Okay. Oh, you, you don't, don't have detect magic. magic. I don't have detect oh. magic. Maybe I have it. I know uh. I'm not a healer, but maybe that's my magic. Sophie. I put so, my hands on it. <laughs> Sophie, your magic is that you're a wonderful person, and you jump really good. Do I get anything? Uh, go ahead and roll me a pure luck check. <laughs> 14. Down. Uh, hey, you put your hands on there, and you hear a whispering. Oh my god. Sophie. Oh my god. You should you should stand up. And you see M's talking in your ear. <laughs> you gotta stand up. It's not it's not gonna okay, happen. I'm no, sorry. you're okay. I, yeah. no, thank I'm you, thank you, M. It's fine. Do you I'm want me not to just detect magician? Go to a like a hardware store nearby and maybe we can get this thing patched up. The whole fountain? Yeah, I don't know. I could uh, I could stay here if you guys <laughs> Look, my family, no? my family okay. works I in think construction. That we could maybe yeah. help in some other way. You see, oh, M M looks out and says, I Look, if all of you are too kind to rescue me and then offer to help right here, I can't be here. I have to find a way to get back in touch with the waters. Can we take you to the, the reservoir or Washington Square Park or somewhere else like that? You could always stay at my place. Do you live in a fountain? No, I'm on Staten Island. I'm going to go to Washington Square Park. <laughs> Great. And, uh, no one wants to go to your place, Sophie. <laughs> I'm just, really the, sorry. The is so quick. Well, I can fly, so it's not okay, about that. Right. But <laughs> I'm going to go to Washington Square Park to figure something out. Be careful. Be safe out there. You too. Thank you for everything you've done. Something's going on. Hey, let us know if you need any more help. Toots. I know I could always count on you. She takes off into the sky. Uh, you hear the faint sort of uh, twinkle of music coming from off in the ramble as the wedding continues. Uh, well, let's go. I'm going to this wedding. Going to wedding. Oh, yeah. This is the bread wedding. The pigeons are going to get off. I'm uh, predicting it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a really good point. I feel like it didn't the get the bread bread wedding, attention. Because it's That's bad good. for birds to That's eat good. their bread. Yeah. Thank you. I thought it was really right. good stuff. I, I thought birds could eat bread. I think they don't. They eat bread. Yeah, that's what the bread doesn't really get to tell jokes. I'm sorry. 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 I'm s
uh, leave for the entire ceremony and then come back to enjoy the free food and drink? I'm, I mean, I'm fascinated that during your daughter's wedding, you were scanning the crowd to see who was in attendance. Darling, the show must go on. Sometimes things happen and you have to improvise and that's what's so exciting about life. Give me a persuasion check real quick. I like her answer better. <laughs> <Nor mine. laughs> uh, I got 20, not Nat. Not Nat. Uh, you see, he goes, I suppose I don't have an understanding of how actors and various other hooligans <laughs> and theater people conduct their business. But you're welcome to avail yourself to all the food and tasty treats here. Many of them are quite small, although, of course, that is to be expected because I and my family are very teeny tiny. <laughs> teeny tiny in stature, but big in character and importance. You have spoken truly, Mr. Moore. A friend, as always, to the Pixies and the entire Confetti family. Please help yourself to some cupcakes. And also we have, I believe, uh, some cannolis that are being passed around right now. They mm. are, you do, you... I'm eating one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good, right? We mm. got it from Gianella's over in Brooklyn. They do a great cannoli. Oh, you should try it at uh, Spaghetti's. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening in Staten Island? <laughs> a bakery spaghetti. named Spaghetti's? Bakery named Spaghetti's? Is it your last bakery? I'm sorry, I have to, I have to raise a point. Isn't your last name, did you just the Italian word for bicycle? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, woof. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> your last okay, name is you Confetti. Go Watch out, Confetti. Yeah, your last oh, name is Confetti. You got a problem with my last name? No, you guys I don't hear all the time. <laughs> There's a bunch of little, little tiny pixies, guns. Little tiny guns and all these pixies cock. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I grabbed my gun. Right, I take my earrings out. Everybody, Let's go. No, everybody. I, I use minor illusion to throw confetti up into the air. It's a celebration. Your name is a celebration. Ah, She's the so symbol good. of our name. Beautiful. Confetti. Little pieces of paper to mark a celebration and then it gets stuck in the street and then all the gutters and stuff. All right, help yourself to the food. All right. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> wow, that almost went real sad. <laughs> Let's not get shot. Yeah. <laughs> Do you fair. bake spaghetti? I don't know. <laughs> There's a bakery called Spaghetti. Oh, it's, <laughs> the, the Joey's Spaghetti. Is, it's really good. It's honestly not bad. Um, uh, I'm going to need everybody here to make a wisdom saving throw. Uh -oh. uh, 22. Oof. 18. 18. I get advantage 17. on all wisdom saving throws, right? Four. Um, four, gotcha. 15. 15. And what did Sophia get? 17. Cool, gotcha. Wow. Um, right? Wise crew. Wise crew. Here we go. Two wise crew. Yeah. <laughs> wise crew. Wise crew. Wise crew. Oh, can I use a lucky point? You can use lucky point. Okay, okay. great. Two wise. Oh. That one. Oh. That one. Does go it with have the to <laughs> Do you get wisdom advantage? You get advantage on all wisdom saving throws, or what does it what does it say? Enchantment in possession. This is not enchantment. So you oh, do not then get advantage. okay, eleven, and then my wisdom. Hey, should I use another lucky uh, wisdom save? Thirteen. Thirteen. It might be gotcha. something small. Um, cool. Uh, you guys are hanging out at the wedding. Uh, uh, the reception is starting. You guys see that the tent is full. Uh, Angela, the bride, is saying hi to everyone. She looks so oh happy. Um, she's got. No shock here, a little pixie cut that comes over one of her uh, eyes. Um, she looks so happy. You see that uh, an announcer uh, who looks to be this uh, sort of, you know, little uh, cricket-legged fairy with like a little tux jacket on goes, all right, all right, all right, let's clear that dance floor for our first dance between the bride and groom. Give it up for Angela Confetti and Ronald Pigeon. I'm so excited to see what this looks like. <laughs> Um, you guys see that uh, Angela steps out on the floor, makes an earnest attempt to start dancing with Ronald. He's about <laughs> as big as she is, but Ronald can mostly just pigeon around. Yeah. He can't really dance. Uh, so he's just kind of jutting higgledy-piggledy over the dance floor, <laughs> and she kind of twirls and little bits of glitter around her as this happens. Uh, I start trying to, like, palm people different, like, pill cocktails, because that's just how I bond at, like, a wedding. Uh, <laughs> You're going to uh, need this. This is reminding me of my first dance with Dale, so I'll take one. Uh, There's a bunch of good stuff in there. There's about five different cool. pills. Um, you possibly, no. um, uh, anyone who wants to can make a perception check. No, I will. I don't think I'm very Oh, perceptive. I got a net one. 21. 23. 18. Perception. Cool. Or, uh, 
you go. Um, I got 18. 18, cool. Um, uh, so, M Misty, what's Misty doing here at the reception with a nat one on a perception? <laughs> I mean, I'm just drinking champagne, baby. You're just I'm like you dancing like this, like a like a real cool old lady. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Misty, you're having a ball because you're just holding court and making someone else's wedding kind of about yourself, and it's and the only one who was invited. Are you, are you wearing white? <laughs> it's an off white. It's a it's a cream. It's and pretty. It's be glowing. So rude. It's a beautiful uh, dress. Look, yeah. lace is. I was um, it, it's a traditional in my family to wear lace to other people's weddings. And I think who got so, some people 18, got. I got twenty one. Oh, twenty one. Twenty three. I didn't roll. Uh, go ahead. I don't think I'm very. Perceptive. You're not perceptive. That's totally yeah. fine. Um, so uh, with an eighteen, what's Ricky up to at the reception? Uh, Ricky was like kind of tracked down snacks, and then he was also like. When they started dancing, just was like very curious about th that image and was sort of <laughs> honed in on that. Um, uh, uh, for those who got above a twenty, uh, as you guys are just hanging out here, you all begin to notice a lot of different stuff. Kogrash and Kingston, you specifically notice that there are a lot of different kinds of people here. Uh, in addition to Faye, you see that uh, Rourke uh, Redcap is here, who's one head of the sort of fairy mafia. There's uh, some Domovoy that are like Russian fairies that are over in a corner. Um, uh, there's the band, there seems to be some kind of like water, Nixie kind of spirit. Uh, the consigliere, Grig Prickthorn is here as well. Um, you also uh, are looking around, are you guys looking for anything in particular or are you just like kind of having a good time? I think Kugrash is a little concerned about uh, his friend Ronald Pigeon and the other pigeons getting like offed by these pixies. Cool. So I'm like looking to see if anybody's like... And I, I think I'm thinking more about how all the different things are adding up. Mm -hmm. So I think this is just a head on a swivel looking for more weird stuff. Gotcha, cool. Yeah. Um, uh, Kyle, you see that uh, Perry comes over to you and says, Ha ha, hi! Oh, looks like the dancing's getting started a little bit nice. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Perry, as well, uh, uh, You kind of shake a tail feather? Yeah, we well, can dance. Uh, yeah, uh, I started doing my dance with Perry. Uh, I just had my one dance. Uh, Perry, uh, how have the pixies been uh, treating you? Oh, we put out so many crumbs. They were such good friends. Yeah. It's so good to see Ronald, you know, like we were all worried for a little while because he had that whole thing with Jessica Pigeon and that was sort of weird for a while. What was up with Jessica Pigeon? Oh, you know, it's one of those things where they met in college and they sort of fell into a pattern and then they got off and sort of changed as people, but it was kind of like good money after yeah, that. Yeah, okay. They'd already sunk so much time into the relationship that as they became more and more incompatible, it just didn't seem to make sense anymore. Yeah. And all of our friends, you know, nobody wants to be that first person across the river to sort of mention like, hey, you guys fight more than you get along, so <laughs> maybe you should guys think about packing it in. You're still in your early 20s, you know, you could actually, you know, find another partner, go out and date around, but it just seems to be that kind of thing where, uh, you know, routine and habit, is, or every day it gets harder against the weight of all the previous experiences to break out of a bad pattern. It's weird, you're codependent. I stuff a Xanax <laughs> in his mouth as I pass by. <laughs> <laughs> so much Xanax in one pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> it was a quarter. It was a quarter of a bar, don't worry. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh wow. fuck. I'm sorry if I fucked that up. Very. Wow. Uh, how does Jessica feel about this wedding? So loose. So loose. Everything's good. She's. You're just good. I'm good. Right. I'm so yeah, yeah. sorry, dude. <laughs> hey, I thought I was me. helping you. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the most I've ever gotten out of Perry. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Perry was so perceptive. <laughs> I got some uppers, too, if you want to yeah. try to, like, counterbalance this. Oh, my God, this. don't make what a little I'm cocktail in <laughs> this <laughs> tiny creature's um, body. Well, you know what? Why don't we give him a lot of coffee? <laughs> that won't. Oh, I got some coffee. I know just what you need. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Hey man, you're beautiful. Hey, you're beautiful you're too, man. You're beautiful. Mary. You're great. Can you fly? Uh, no. Here's an upper, just give him that. Uh, I'm flying right now. <laughs> on the ground, first time. Okay, I gotta take a walk. I can't be in here anymore. Harry, <laughs> oh, God, God, God be Harry. Take your drugs. I can't be around all these people. Oh, sorry, I'm so sorry, man. Oh, uh, Perry leaves. Um, uh, what's, uh, so Sophia also got a high protection check. What's Sophia sort of on the lookout for? Okay, well, Sophia is definitely not in her right mind because she is witnessing a happy marriage and it's giving her flashbacks and making her think of Dale. Um, so I think 
But possibly whatever she got from Pete is helping her to focus on uh, intellectual things rather than emotional things. And she is, the fact that Mario was here is on her mind. Gotcha. So she's kind of like on the bead for like how and why Mario got here and what the deal was. Yeah, I think she's like scanning, but then something will catch her eye and she'll be like, oh my God. It's the same table runner color as ours was. <laughs> Sophia, get it together. With the 21, you notice that the Pixies partially recognize you. A couple of them kind of make a look, not in a threatening or intimidating way, but in a way of like, oh, they must know your He family. did know my last name. Knew your last name, exactly. Um, after a certain, after the, the bride dances, you see that they announce the father-daughter dance. Uh, you see that uh, Don Confetti dances with Angelo. You see him there. You see she goes like, oh, baby. He goes, Angela, night of my life. The wind under my little butterfly wings. I love you so much. I don't know why you had to marry a pigeon, but notice, if he ever crosses you, he'll be sleeping with the fishes. By fishes, I mean pigeons. They die all the time. They really do die all the time. <laughs> they're not very smart or good at surviving. And he says, I love you, Daddy. And they just twirl around a little bit. After that, you see that Angela um, is actually over near you, getting a little drink for herself um, and catching a little moment. Uh, and as she flies past, she turns over to you in her little kind of white, it looks like uh, white leaves that have been like kind of glued or like it's a like very form-fitting little pixie dress. She looks over. David's bridal. How did you know? Oh, I tried that one on. It Honestly, I do not have the figure to pull it off like you, though. You look fantastic. I'm not surprised you don't have the figure to pull it off. You're about 100 times bigger than I am. Well, yeah, you must have had to get that size down a <laughs> lot. Yeah, it was really expensive. My dad paid for it, but it's okay because he's a very successful businessman. Yeah, well, congratulations on your wedding day. Marriage is a beautiful thing. Oh, my God, that's so sweet of you to say. Thank you so much. Yeah. Love your hair, by the way. Thank you. I do it myself. I know it's crazy. A lot of a lot of estheticians don't actually work on themselves, but I do. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Congratulations. Where are you guys gonna honeymoon? Well, there's a lot of rooftops in the city. They have a lot of crumbs on them, so that's where Ronald's interested in going. Well, what about you? I mean, your honeymoon shouldn't just be something that's so specifically for your husband. <laughs> I think he'll end up going probably anywhere, but every time I've asked, he only mentions these rooftops with crumbs on them. Oh, okay. Well, you should definitely look into, uh, you know, Puerto Vallarta. Really? <laughs> yeah. I heard Tulum was really in. A lot of people were going to Tulum. No, Puerto Vallarta is the most beautiful honeymoon you could ever go on. Oh my God, sweetheart, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Mm. All right, well, it's my day, so if you're gonna cry, yeah. go outside. Uh, you see that she <laughs> flies away. Uh, yes. I have a quick question. Was that a wisdom saving throw that we did? It was. Okay, I do get advantage on wisdom saving throws across the board from my plug bracelet. Oh, hell yeah, great. So it isn't dual soul, but, but gotcha. yeah, yeah. So I'm at like an 20 or something. Cool, like cool, cool, cool. I think I'm just trying to sell drugs again. <laughs> Pete, you actually, a uh, guy comes over to you. Uh, you see there's one of the dryads who's been kind of helping out, like almost like a hostess here, comes over and says, uh, are you the plug? Yeah. And points over to a table in the corner. You look at this table. This table appears to have humans at it. Uh, a bunch of humans. They're wearing very formal black suits. Uh, you see there's about three guys in black suits. They look very... Good-looking, pale, um, sort of like uh, sharp, predatory-looking people. There's one woman there who's got like a pencil skirt and a black suit top. Um, and you see that there is a much older man who has that vibe that very old businessmen have sometimes of being like made of granite, just in how like <laughs> still and assured he is. Uh, there's another young woman there with them who's wearing a much more colorful gown and looks a lot more like flush, like younger, maybe like early 20s. Uh, her mascara is running a little bit as though she's been crying. Um, and you see that the dryad directs you over to their table. Great. I put on my uh, game face. <laughs> uh, Beautiful night. The old man speaks. You see the other sort of younger people nod their head at you. 
Uh, the young woman doesn't make any eye contact with you at all. The older fellow looks at you and says, beautiful night is right. Lovely out here. I always enjoy New York in the winter. Nights get along and you can't see the stars, but you can feel them out there. Yeah, totally. Great party. I'm having a great time. You guys having a good time? We could be having a better time. I agree. What can I get you? Well, uh, I think we'll take, uh, let's see, a brick of uh, your finest snow, my young man. Great. All right. Uh, don't accidentally give them the cream. <laughs> like, I'm digging through and trying to separate like the full-on ashes. <laughs> okay, they're all in really dark bags. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Yeah, I uh, I pull out like a insane amount of blow. <laughs> <laughs> um, you see that the guy nods to one of the younger people at the table, and this young man hands you crisp fresh from the bank notes. Cool. Uh, I don't count them. I'm just someone. Mm -hmm. uh, puts them away. Um, you see that the young woman uh, sort of looks up a little bit. The other woman, very sort of like slim and kind of, again, all business looking, takes the brick, cuts it open with one of her nails, just uh, and begins to do out some lines, not in front of herself, but in front of the young woman at the table. Um, you see that uh, the older man looks up and says, care to do something with us? I would love to, man. And as I do that, can I s cast subtle spell with detect thoughts on this person Ooh. by using a sorcery point? Hell yes. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> uh, okay, so subtle spell, I don't have to move anything and you no one can tell. You don't move your mouth, you don't move your hands, nobody can tell you're casting oh God, a spell. That's so sick. Um, that uh, is awesome. Hell yeah. Um, Rad. I got a roll some Does that mean that they don't have a chance to save against it because they don't know that's happening? They do still save against it. And this is, are you casting on the, the girl that they're giving coke to? The, cry, the crying one, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of dice. <laughs> Fuck. Um, uh, you see, uh, <laughs> <laughs> your sense of curiosity <laughs> begins to move through. Um, you completely glide over all of the people at the table dressed in black, including the old man, uh, but the mind of the young woman opens up to you. Uh, you feel yourself split between reading her thoughts and the desire to go deeper. So you can either read just her surface thoughts or you can choose to go deeper. If you go deeper, it's gonna require active effort and might fuck up you talking to these guys at the table and give them a chance to notice. True, okay, can I stay in surface thoughts right now while like doing lines with them and then wait until Absolutely. it feels like? Um, you feel the young woman's surface thoughts are going like, it's not too much longer. It's not too much longer, it's just another year. All you need is another year. You're gonna get out of this. You know other people that have done this, and they're all fine. They got what they needed. Um, you see that the old man looks up at you and says, well, uh, after you, my good man. Great, I do an insanely long line. <laughs> you see, he looks at you and says, Jesus Christ, you got a nose on you, kid. What are you, half elephant? My God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, you know, it's such a great night. What do, what do you guys do? You're posted in the corner. Why aren't you out there mingling? Uh, you know, I'm uh, an associate of Don Confetti, uh, old business partners. The, uh, I wouldn't want to take up space on the dance floor. Besides, I got two left feet as it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, you're telling me. You seem like a sports guy. You play anything? Do I play any sports? I used to play stickball back in the day, but that was a long time ago. Very cool, very cool. He looks over at you and says, uh, how about yourself? What's your name, friend? Uh, I'm Jeffrey. Jeffrey? Rob, nice to meet you. Great, great to meet you too. Uh, he looks over at you and says, uh, so, I imagine you're gonna be, uh, what, writing this wedding off on your taxes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah, you know what? You know what? They, I heard. I heard they're trying to pass some sort of law uh, that's that's going to hike up the tax rate for people who are. You, you know, I believe in trickle down theory, don't you? You look, by the way, and he <laughs> says, he says, trickle down. He goes, oh, trickle down. 
Reagan was a genius. Right? Reagan was a I genius. I get him. I'm trying to. I tried to get him so hyped up on this, and then I, that man. I mean, what he I did go for, for this the deeper country. thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you go into her deeper thoughts. As you go into her deeper thoughts, um, you see that she starts doing lines off the table. The other three young men and the other young woman at the table, who are all very pale, watch her do lines by herself. And you see that all of them start to tap their fingers. As you go deeper into her thoughts, you see other instances of her going out with these guys, doing drugs the people surrounding her, fangs distending from their mouth, sinking their fangs into her and drinking her blood. Not enough to kill her, but getting her high enough that they can get a high off of drinking her blood. Okay. By the way, you do not see the old man uh, drinking blood from her. Okay. You see, he looks at you and says, Reagan, he was great. Um, I mean, you know, I never voted for him because I'm not a big voting guy, but I donated uh, like crazy to his campaign. Go ahead and, first of all, give me a wild magic roll for that Detect Thoughts. <laughs> oh, no. Two. Two. <laughs> Jesus. Uh -oh. Now, it's, now it's one and two. Now it's one and two. Um, uh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, could you also be kind enough to uh, give me a deception check? Oh, cool. I think I have good deception. Yeah, it's plus eight. All right. <laughs> 19 with, what was deception? I do plus these? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's 27. Woo! Uh, rad. Um, so you see, yeah, he talks to you a little while longer. Um, after the girl's in a couple lines, you see that um, she looks around, makes eye contact with you as her eyes kind of well up with tears, stands up and walks outside with the other four, and it's just you and the old man, Rob. Um, who are here. You see, he looks over at you and says, well, thanks again for uh, being Johnny on the spot here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what was it again? Jeffrey. Jeffrey, right. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't want to say your real name or uh, bubbles would come out of my mouth, huh? Help. <laughs> uh, I la I do not let him know that that registered with me. I'm like, oh, sure, buddy. And then I uh, walk away. Cool. Nauseous. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rad, uh, what does Pete do as he walks away? Uh, I'm trying to find other people. I'm trying to find Kingston. <laughs> cool. You go over to Kingston. Kingston's head's on a swivel. You're looking around. You've clocked Pete having this interaction. Do I recognize this man? You don't recognize this man. Okay. Pete, what's going on? What the fuck? Okay, we have to talk, but we can't talk here. Okay, you want to dance? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. Wait, we can dance and talk. So we're like dancing. Come on, dance! <laughs> Yeah. Okay, dude, so, those, do you see those crazy people over there? Yeah. All right, so, you know, like, the girl who looks, like, really sad? Uh-huh. Okay, well, I detected her thoughts. It seems like those other three really pale people with her are vampires. Okay. They make her do a bunch of drugs, and then they suck her blood to get high off of her. Okay, that's not that but, crazy. Okay, no, the fucking crazy thing is, you know hey, that... keep part? dancing, I'm right? so, This isn't a dance. All right. <laughs> So, you know, like, that older guy? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, Dad, I think that maybe that was my dad. I'm what? not sure what happened. It's something I have never fucking... seen that man before. Okay, my dad is a motherfucker dickhead, and oh. he, he's, he said someone helped me by making bubbles come out of his mouth and taking him away. So he knew what you, he knew what you had done to your father? This old guy knew what had happened to my dad. Have you told he anyone also else knew. about your dad? I don't know. Who have I told? No, I think I told Alejandro about what happened to my dad. I think? I'm not sure. Do you guys remember me telling this story about my dad and the bubbles? I don't think we've heard this before. It's cool, though. Gotta say, if you can teach me that trick, that's cool. I would do that. Yeah, I think I told you guys, because then someone was like, we can kill him if you want. And I said, yeah, please go ahead and kill my dad. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Somebody in the in your head? Yeah, whoever uh, Lazarus is, someone evil did this to me, and I let them. Okay, I don't like this man in the corner. I, 
Misty, you got any thoughts? Oh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about. Is he still there? Can I look over and see if he's still there? I feel like I would know everybody at this point. Yes, exactly. I feel like anybody I don't know, I don't uh, like them. Yeah, you see that he's now speaking. He's talking to Don Confetti over in the corner. They're kind of chatting and laughing with each other. Um, (gasps) Do 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 do. Okay, so. I don't know if this is crazy. Okay. Okay, I gotta keep dancing. Okay, um, so what I think happened is, you guys know how it, we keep hearing Lazarus is like, I'm leaving today. Uh huh. So. I mean, you keep hearing it and you keep telling us about right, it. Right, right, but anyway. So, my dad got carried away because he was a piece of shit and I was fine with it. But what if this Lazarus guy took over his soul or something and then used that fountain to like clean it? Something happened with that fountain and cleaning, like, bad people. I don't know. Misty, do you want to use your connections with Don Confetti to go over and have him introduce you to this man? That's a great idea. Want to try something like that? Checking in with the other people at the wedding. What are you guys up to, right? I guess we'll go join these. Mm -hmm. We see the whole thing. I'm wasted in trying to start a conga line. (laughs) (laughs) No one understands what I'm doing. (laughs) They're all so small. In that case, I grabbed so so are you doing okay? I'm trying to start a conga line, but, like, with their heads. I'm (laughs) dancing with my uh, my date. She's just sort of on my... <laughs> this buff, hot firefighter with a pigeon on his chest. It's like my necklace. Incredible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna snap a picture of that and send it to the girls at the salon and be like, Mr. March has a girl. <laughs> but dancing towards them, yeah. I go over to that table and I'm like, Don, who's your friend? And I do that like old lady creep. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. the waist to this guy. Um, cool. Make a persuasion check for me if you'd be so kind. I would love to. Ooh. Can we say that you filled a, you guys filled us in on what uh, you're yeah. talking about? And yeah. actually, I'm going to need you to make that check with disadvantage. All right. Uh, that was a 16. And this is a 13. So 23. 23. Cool. You slide your arm around the guy, feels like a human dude, Mm -hmm. older, middle-aged, you know, kind of human guy. Um, uh, You see that Don Capetti says, Oh, Mr. Moore, I'm surprised you have not already met my friend Robert. Robert, please say hi to Misty. Uh, You see that this guy, Robert, turns to you and says, Oh, Ms. Moore, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, Tom, I'm sure. And I give him my hand like this. Uh, kisses your hand. Uh, you see that Don says, Misty is, of course, a very accomplished stage actress. She is, uh, you know, very famous. Uh, you see that Robert nods and says, I've seen some of your performances. Oh, what a knockout. Thank you so much. It's always great to meet. Uh, I don't even like the word fan, but, but people who enjoy my work. You know, we live in a city of artists. That's mm. why we're here, you know, and... Oh, it's so important to, to experience so many of the, the things in the city that people miss out on, you know. So what do you do? Uh, oh, I work in finance. I'm a friend of the Dons. Oh, fantastic. You know, finance is also a great hub of this city. We are just, we wouldn't be able to survive without the finance guys. Look, I mean, all of us would love to, to da- buy into this starving artist myth where you have to be starving to, to make art, but let's be realistic. When you have a nice bed, Everything's a little easier, you know what I mean? Um, and I doubt you've been starving for some time, Miss Moore. Well, you know, I mean, starving is relative. Broke is relative, you know what I mean? But I do fine. I do fine. Mm, I'm sure. Uh, you see, he looks over. Um, the vampires and the young girl who now is, she's like bone pale, like, and kind of like having a hard time standing. Uh, they come out wiping their mouths, um, sit back down, uh, and you see the uh, Robert looks over at you and says, well, you'll have to excuse me. It looks like the other vampires have come back. And he turns around and walks away from you. It's been a pleasure. Don looks over and says, yes, it has been a pleasure. Now if you excuse me, I have to go and verbally harass the DJ because he is playing a bunch of duds and these songs, they're too hard to dance to. I will be right back. Don, you gotta come dance with me, though. I will do what I can, but not this. I only do this because you have asked this favor of me on the day of my daughter's wedding. And you see, he <laughs> uh, zips away. Um, can can I, I use up my favor? <laughs> I could have had anything else. <laughs> can I? I I feel like I, I've heard that something's going on with this girl. 
it looks really predatory, her surrounded by these dudes and her looking faint. Mm -hmm. I think as like as like a woman in her 30s, I'm looking at her being like, I got I would like to try to help her out. I feel maternal towards her. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I'm gonna go over there and just say, I'm so sorry. I um I need help getting out of this dress to take to pee. Um, do you guys mind if I borrow this sweet girl? I just need <laughs> I, it's like such a nightmare getting out of this dress to pee. So I just need a, I need a, a friend in the bathroom. Uh, you see the young woman looks up to you and looks at the other people here and says, I'm so sorry, I'm fine, thank you. You're, you're, oh yeah, I'm not worried about you, I'm worried about me and peeing and... Give me a persuasion check. 10. <laughs> uh, yeah, you see that she looks and says, uh, I'm fine, thanks. Pete, are you still reading her mind? Mm -hmm. um, or, well, am I? Yeah, I believe yeah. probably you are. Um, you read in her mind um, uh, that she actually doesn't want to leave the table. She feels afraid and shitty and fucked up, but is also like, choosing to be here in some regard or another. Okay, okay, cool. I think I go up to Soph and I'm like, heard you, did I overhear you need some help in the bathroom? They're yes. gender neutral at this wedding. Okay, I can go with you. great. That'd be so helpful. Thank you so much. If you ever need a haircut, you have beautiful hair. And I give her my business oh, card. Uh, can you give me a deception check as well? A nine. Uh, you see that Robert speaks up and says, Now, forgive me for being blunt, but you folks aren't worried for the safety of my companion Melissa here, are you? Okay, I'm just going to lay it out there. First off, I'm a little drunk because I'm going through a divorce and it's hard to be at a wedding. Second off, if I see a young woman surrounded by men who's looking a little sick to her stomach at a place where alcohol is being imbibed at an alarming rate, I'm gonna step in and make sure she didn't get roofied. You see, he nods, looks, looks around. Uh, you see, he says, Melissa, you're free to go if you wanna go. She looks over at him and says, I don't wanna go. I pop in, I'm like, she looks like she's having a great time. You guys look like you're having a great time. Sophie. Sorry, I just she's... wanted to make sure someone didn't get roofied. And we need more strong women like you, right? Thank you. And Thank you. Now, will you now help let's me move get on out to of the my next dress girl. so I can pee? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. He says, and Robert says, um, while we're handing out business cards, Jeffrey, do you ever wanna talk? You see, uh, hands you a business card. Okay. Uh, his name doesn't appear on it, but it has a uh, sort of address and the name of like a prominent hedge fund on it. It doesn't say Robert. It's it does not just say a, Robert. Oh, a hedge it's, fund. It's like, it's like a business's business card. It doesn't have his name on it. Can you um, do, do either of you have to type good and evil? I do not. I mean, you have, you have protection from that. I oh, you have, have protection, but not detect. I feel like uh, I had that, but I don't have it anymore. Right? Yeah. I, they got I think dancing. I'm like really <laughs> triggered by the bubbles comment still, like mm -hmm. with my dad, and I'm just like kind of seething. Cool. I don't know what I'm doing, I but I know I'm angry. That interaction shook me back into place. I'm no longer as upset about the wedding. I'm explaining to you all the detect thought stuff and how okay. she actually wanted to be there. Okay. And so there's some sort of Weird setup. I have a now. Is Kugrash watching this? Yeah, I think we're all kind of circled up. I think yeah. after the, once these guys started dancing, I think we all kind of came together and then we're. Um, cool. You look at this guy, Robert. You've met this guy before. What? You met this guy a long time ago. What do I know about him? You know that he's a very powerful, very dangerous guy who you only met in passing one time. Okay. Does he know Gabriella? Okay. Who's Gabriella? Hey, you know, it doesn't matter. Weird. Mm, this guy's bad news. Okay, I have a theory. I have a theory based off of what, uh, what Pete said. They're laundering souls and selling them to the soulless. 
What? That's kind what? of brilliant. That's so I, intense. I, I think that's, that's what I think they're doing. Of, I think they're when stealing I'm like, souls and then cleaning them in the Bethesda fountain and then selling them to people who don't have souls. Like, like selling passports. Yeah. Uh, I don't I, know I'm why so. I don't. Uh, I. I don't know if this is too righty about this, but I think like I'm so worked up about this like Robert guy and he knows something about my dad and I'm talking to them and I'm like, that fucking guy knows something about my dad. And when I point, I activate True Strike. Is that <laughs> uh, possible? Awesome, yeah, that's okay, cool. great. Because I know I it takes it. a whole turn. Uh, roll wild magic for me, please. Fuck, okay. One and two. Uh, one and, one and two. two now. Six. Hey! Uh, all right, everybody, let's get Pete. Let's okay, all right, down. I'm let's everybody. Should we? We about ready to go, right? Yeah. That's true, we are depleted. He, we already had a battle Does he look today. the same as he did back he then? Yep. That's... He's a vampire. What but, a good but, couple. But you, in your story, you said you didn't see him drinking the blood. He was the one, it was the other three. Yeah, but he Yeah, might. yeah, so this guy... I think, I think, I think yeah. this guy... This man. You guys are, by the way, talking very loudly at the wedding hey, right now. Hey, everybody, yeah. uh, why don't we go back to my so, place, all right? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Hey, Macarena. <laughs> we, grab, we grab her. Uh, <laughs> um, you guys bounce from As the... we leave, I just want to write a really long, really heartfelt, way too intimate um, thing <laughs> in, like, the wedding book. <laughs> Take the wedding book. Take the wedding book. Okay, well, you guys can take me. I'm writing. Oh, I'm still don't writing get us in the wedding for book. a wedding book. No, I'm uh, writing. Right. Yeah, I'm writing write about it. the beauty of marriage. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> can, I, can I leave a fifty dollar check as a gift? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah, yes. I also uh, want to leave it. I give. I want to just give like a head nod or like a little salute to that guy to see how he reacts to me. Uh, uh he has no recognition of you at all and looks very confused. Okay. Uh, I leave a couple tickets for opening night of um, Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> <laughs> like a, you just carry those be, around? Oh you God. God. Don't you? No, I don't. I, 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 I add, them, my, I I add my name to her card. Also, Cug Rush Paul. Also from me. <laughs> uh, um, guys... I asked the wedding planner if there's another guest book because I filled this one up. <laughs> Uh, you guys proceed to bounce. You see that um, as you're all getting ready to leave, Perry comes over to you, Kyle Grash. Hey! Uh, what's going on? Hey. Uh, we gotta head out. <laughs> God damn it, I kiss him. Hi, <laughs> 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 Perry. They're like making out. We're like, Kyle Grash, we gotta go. Incredible. I oh have one God. more thing. I adjust I, my contacts so I can see better. I know I'm leading them on, but I just, I feel like we got a like short term. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to do the nice thing, the not the right thing. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> um, do vampires show up in photographs? Because they should—they don't show up in mirrors. Do vampires show do. up in photographs? I don't think they show up in photographs, no. Great. Uh, so can we take a selfie with the vampires and Robert in the background? Yes. Photo, 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 photo. Oh, yeah. Is he a Robert's a vampire? That's brilliant. Esther, this is me uh, at the wedding. <laughs> okay, don't send it to anyone. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, and then I look at the picture. Uh, at that table, uh, Melissa shows up, the young woman, and Robert shows uh, okay, up. Okay, Robert okay. does show okay. up. All right, everybody, back to my house. Let's go. Yeah, okay. You guys dip. Uh, arriving back at Kingston's, uh, what do you guys do when you get there? Fuck that guy. Do you, do you have think any... your mother has any cinnamon rolls baking or some kind of... My mother, what time is it? Uh, it's, it's probably like 11 o'clock at night. It's My mother should be in bed. I promise you if I went down there and asked for cinnamon rolls, she would wake up and cook them gladly. <laughs> yeah. We're not doing that. Uh, do you have any sort of deli meats or anything? I, I just sort of snacked on uh, tiny uh, pixie What do fruit. I have in my house? <laughs> uh, I feel like I have a bunch of fresh vegetables. And I, can I make a... like a? You make a, a big salad. Yeah, yeah I, make a, <laughs> I make a big salad. <laughs> Lots of baby spinach. I chop up some tomatoes, uh, some bell peppers. <laughs> You go to the farmer's oil. market for this? Of course beautiful. I go to the farmer's market. I'm all about celebrating. You know, I'm, I'm like on local. your page. I like uh, start making some hummus and a food processor <laughs> yeah. with you. Oh. Your world is cooking. We're all I'm, wet okay, in nice clothes cooking. I'm yeah. making eggplant rollatini. Hey. Okay. Hey. It's just us three bubbing elbows in the kitchen. You go to Queens oh for this God. mozzarella. It's delicious. Mm. I mean, of course. Only the best. Can I just, as a precaution, use divine sense to see if there's any... 
Would you scan the place? No, Kingston's apartment. Seems nice. Incredible. You do detect a very strong undead presence on the top of the refrigerator. It's the mummy, all right? Just It's just the you, mummy, all right? You have a mummy? What? Yeah. Is this what the obsidian onk is about? Yes, it, yeah, it's from the, when yeah, we fought yeah, the yeah. mummy back in the... In oh, the darlings, you know? it was so much yeah. oh, right. fun. The stories what? we have. Yeah, it was I wild. have nightmares really easily. What? What? <laughs> well, if you have nightmares recently, shouldn't we not yeah, tell you the so scary thing we did? About the scary thing that we did. Okay. Yeah, anyway, guys, the that... Metropolitan Museum has so much fascinating stuff in it, and it's free to, I mean, it's not free, it's suggested donation. But if you pay for the Metropolitan Museum, you're a goddamn The Met fool. isn't free anymore. They changed it, it's my, $25. Uh, phone now, and I'm doing like a little like seven minute workout. <laughs> <laughs> great, okay, great. <laughs> Everybody settle. We've got salad on the table, eggplant rollatini, some fresh made hummus. Amazing. What's going on? This guy, I know this guy from the uh, 80s, and he hasn't aged. So okay. whether or not he's a vampire, Misty, may uh, I? He's something. May I ask you, Misty? Mm. And uh, before, when I mentioned your age, I'm I doing was, this. I was before <laughs> I was scolded at by a man who tried to snort uh, human remains. So well, you know, <laughs> let's let that sit with everyone. But uh, are you a vampire, or is there a way to be no. immortal? Darling, that Ronald could be a. I'm a fairy. So is oh. is Ronald mm. possibly a fairy? Now see. Robert. I mean, it's Robert. possible, but I have never met this man before in my life, and the fairy community in New York City is pretty tight. I mean, okay. look, I'm friends with Don Confetti, and that guy's not a great dude, but he is one of my people, you know? You've got to stick I together. Mm. Congrats. I hate to pin it to you, ma'am, but when you met him, you know this guy from the 80s. How? Uh, eh. Uh, he's... He hangs out around humans. I don't think he hangs out around, uh this type. I think he hangs out in the real world. I feel like you're not telling us something. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, what is How, in what context did you meet him? Did you, I don't know, get caught in a rat trap in his apartment? Oh, okay. Let's not be rude. Yeah, let's not... Oh, I mean, was that rude? I did, I'm on I your page. I'm sorry. I'm a Cut, we're not trying to put you in a space hey, you don't it. want to be put in, but we, I mean, this is, this seems to be something. I wasn't always a rat. <gasps> what? What? I wasn't, I wasn't always a rat. You chose to be a rat? I didn't. From what? Were you like a parrot or a turtle? No, I was a human. <laughs> I was a guy. What? <laughs> what? what? You what? were a, a dude <gasps> named Cugrash? That no, is exactly my, what my that, person exactly. was. It's, who, who names their child Cugrash? My name is not... Were you like a stockbroker? Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> what was your name? What'd your name used to be? My name, my real name... Um, is Bruce. Bruce what? what? Bruce what? Cugrich. Okay, I Google, I, can I go on Google and search Bruce Cugrich? Uh, yeah, go ahead and make an investigate check. This is huge for me. This right is now. crazy. The idea that I'm looking at a rat man that used to be a full man named Bruce. And he's wearing a crown. I got a four. <laughs> is there another Bruce Cugrich? Um, there's an extremely successful <laughs> movie horse breeder named Bruce Cugrich. A movie horse? He breeds horses for movies, like show horses. I show everyone. Oh my God! Wait, he breeds horses. That's why you're good with animals. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Yeah, this all yeah, makes sense. It, it's How do you not, get into that kind of job? No, I got. Is it, it has to be your it's parents it's or something? It's got to be a family job, yeah. right? Horse wow. breeding, movie horse breeding. Point is, I'm Cugrash now. And, um, but I, I, I knew this man in Look, my old life. I'm a drug dealer, man. Like, I, it's fine. Just tell us everything about who you used to be and how you knew this guy. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, you know, that part of my life is behind me. I wasn't, I Look, was... Look, darling, we've all had different yeah. lives. I can tell you about, let me tell you about my good friend, John Wilkes Booth. He was a Whoa. fabulous Whoa. actor. That's a big Fabulous. Drop. Okay. I don't say it wasn't as bad as John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> if we're all admitting secrets, I wasn't always a firefighter. <laughs> Okay, we were no way I was in, in high school, and then after high school, I became a that's firefighter. That's not a secret. That's wow. just a normal life. Ricky, that's you have to live. Is you what you're saying. Like, uh, and then firefighter, and then or are you leaving something else I had out? community college for a year and a half. You uh, get a text on your phone, Ricky, from Esther. Uh, it says, at Clinton Hill Chantry with Alejandro, we may have found something. Are you with Pete? Uh, and text... 
that's awesome. Uh, with Pete right now, how are you? Uh, and yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, the text back says, if all of you guys are there, you should come here at, at your nearest convenience. You can come tonight if you need to, or tomorrow. Um, I mean, I, I'm I, pretty tired. And I just made this big salad. <laughs> Honestly, I've got so much rollatini in me. <laughs> I'm worried. Uh, I wonder if it, if we can go tonight or tomorrow, but I, I'm... I don't know. I feel like I have a bad feeling. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of right. do too. Let's go. All right, let's go. Let's go tonight. Salad and hummus yeah. and rollatini to I'll, go. I'll get the Tupperware. All right. <laughs> cool. It's like midnight. Uh, you guys hop on the subway to head all the way. I'm into... hopped up on coke, so <laughs> yeah, I'm good uh, to go. You guys get on the train. You're heading out. Uh, it's a long ride from here to Brooklyn. Can we take a short rest on the train? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You can all take a short oh, rest. I'm listening yeah, to um, uh, the prodigy. I just keep stealing looks at Cuck Ranch, oh, trying to imagine what he looked like as a man. Being like, so did he have a did he have a big beard? I have an app that can give people sort of makeup and stuff like that. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do no, that. No, I wasn't. Makeup. I wasn't looked like a smooth ball. ball. No. <laughs> oh my wow. god. You're they so looked like this. Wow. They looked like this. That just looks uh, like a thump. Yeah. Cug, your cheeks are so rosy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know. Your um, jawline is so pronounced. Um, wonderful. You guys arrive at the Clinton Hill Chantry. Uh, Ricky, you're very familiar with this space. Uh, you walk up, you see that Frank is there on the front of the door. Um, you see he looks up and goes, Hi there, Ricky Matsui, how's it going, bud? Uh, pretty good, we just went, came from a wedding, it was beautiful. Oh, beautiful, who got hitched? A uh, pigeon and a little fairy. Beautiful, I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> uh, You see, he uh, uh, says, uh, well, I bet you understand that you know, Esther and Alejandro have been working their butts off in there, so, oh, we got a bunch of new friends. Hello, I'm Frank, I'm a gargoyle, I'm only a head, and I'm living on this door forever, so oh, that's yeah. about me. How's it going, wow. Frank? Oh, it's been a while. Misty, it's good to see you. Good to see you, always good to see you, Frank. <sighs> hey, you know, well, you look good, I gotta say. Uh, by the way, I wanted to, I wanted to mention something. You think you could get tickets for me to come see your show? I I, I can't make it because I'm stuck to this door, but I, I just, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, and you know, I was thinking, I have friends who've been looking for an actor to play the part of Jacob Marley's face in A Christmas Carol, and they've been looking high and low, and I was like, I know somebody who could do that. He's perfect for the part, so I can send your information along to them if you would like. Oh my God! And you would you do that? Absolutely for you, absolutely. <laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah, it would be great, Jacob Marley. I I, <laughs> I wear the chains I uh, forged in life uh, through acts of greed. Absolutely. It sounds like a play. <laughs> uh, Frank is elated. You guys enter into the Clinton Hill Chantry, M a much smaller and less metaphysically intense space. This is sort of just a three-story brownstone that is the same size on the inside okay. that it is on the outside for the most part. Uh, you guys walk in, you see the, the uh, missing glass pane where the questing blade popped out. Uh, you walk into a large library room. This one is library rooms that it's, you know, books lining every Every single wall, and one of those giant tables that, like, could, you know, it's like a study table that could fit like 40 people at it. In the center, these lamps shedding golden light over the table. You see, clearly seeing Alejandro and Esther, they did not sleep last night. Like, they have not been asleep since. They've just been here. Books all over the table everywhere, coffee cups everywhere. You see Alejandro's flat cap is off. He's like got his shirt rolled up. Esther's the same way. You see that she's got a little thing of coffee in her hand. They both look up. Esther says, great, you're here. You made it. Awesome. Great, great, great. We think we may have found something. Uh, Alejandro looks over and says, and there I beheld him in aspect of a, no, sorry, her, no, no, it. There I beheld it in aspect of a gray child that I had searched for for many long years, this being not the realm and the being, monarch of the sixth borough, the child 
the gray orphan, the spirit of the dreaming realm beyond the streets of the city I had known. So the dream world is the sixth burrow. <clears throat> this gray baby. Sorry, what is it called? This gray baby. Oh. <laughs> sorry, I'm um, sorry, one more time. How many languages do you guys all speak? <laughs> I speak some French. Just English and some Can I just Spanish. admire it and enjoy it? Oh, do, I feel really I'm just bad saying, and I, I speak out. five different languages fluently. I have a bit of an accent, but this great baby. Honestly, it's true. I, I hand him a bunch of like, jewel stuff that I grabbed when we were at home. Oh, wow. This one's a cucumber picante. Ooh. It's amazing. You're going to fucking love it. This is really <laughs> good. I like, honestly, a lot of the flavors come with cucumber, but I'm into it. Alejandro. What does that gray baby stuff mean? You see that he does a little mage hand thing and replaces the cell and the jewel, puts it in and goes, Alejandro, I hate this. You know I hate this. You know I hate this. You gonna get popcorn lung. Uh, you gonna get popcorn lung, and then what you gonna do about it? You see that he goes up, and you see that, that this uh, he makes a little uh, smoke Empire State Building with a King Kong on it going like this that sort of floats away. That's sick. Amazing. It is sick, isn't it? That's sick. This gray baby is not the gray orphan. This spirit is to the degree that a realm of chaos, such as the realm of dream, can have order. Nod is the spirit of hope and dreams. Nod is sometimes referred to as the monarch of the sixth borough. That you have met Nod is remarkable. Do you remember what the Grey Orphan said to you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Grey Orphan said a couple of different things. Uh, once they said everyone who ever came here had a dream. Uh, and... Oh, I, I didn't, I don't know what else they said. What was oh, it, Lazarus? I, I had something. Well, right Lazarus now. said... Esther speaks up and points at Ricky and says, we, by the way, have been combing for Lazarus. The Grey Orphan is never referred to as Lazarus. Anytime we've been able to find any writings about anything I happening. think they're different, Keep the yeah. words of Lazarus before it's too late. Alejandro sort of twirls his mustache and says, we have not found any reference to a Lazarus in the dreaming. Oh, but Lazarus is in the Bible. Could it be the biblical Lazarus? Uh, you Raised see, from the dead? Raised from the dead. Uh, I, have, I have a question. Uh, so the dream world is, is referred to as the sixth borough. Is there a time in history, Alejandro or Esther, where the dream world was um, more tangible or more accessible to the other five boroughs? You see that uh, Esther nods and says, the dream world becomes extremely active and tangible in the presence of the arrival of a Vox Phantasma. Also, you can take the L if you go really far. <laughs> but you have to go all the way to the end. Past Canossi, it's long. Okay, I think I went to a curse out there one time. You can't do that anymore. And I think you can't do that on weekends, right? Yeah, yeah no, or it's nights. a weird, uh, it's a shuttle bus situation. Yeah, you can weekends. get a shuttle bus, but the shuttle bus can only be seen by the pure of heart, so it's a hard. It's, hard. it's a whole deal. But um, they do have great, these tiny little buns. I can't remember the name of them. Anyway. Mm. It's the worth the trip, but just. Dream bonds. Okay. Mm. So the baby, do we know? You see that, yeah, Alejandro looks over at you and says, the biblical Lazarus is not a bad place to guess. There are beings within the city that would have some knowledge of these things. What would happen if you raised someone from the dead? Would they have a soul? Or would they be in need of a soul? Perhaps a laundered soul? See, Alejandro shrugs and says, it depends on the matter of their raising. If they were raised by infernal or perhaps nefarious means? It is possible to consider this, yes. Kingston, mm. there are some beings in the city that are aware of such biblical things. I do not concern myself as much with religion as I do with the study of the arcane, but I'm trying to think of people in the city that will... Oh, really? Can I show you them? See, he looks at you and says, Willie. Yeah. The golem. You see, he says, the golem of Williamsburg might yeah. know something. Yes, this is very true. 
I think it would be wise. Peter, would you be amenable to perhaps going to sleep on the table here and allowing myself and Esther to keep a watch on you with our third eye while you venture into the dreaming? Sure. That might be for the best. Something very strange is afoot. See, uh, Esther looks up and says, I don't think going to Willie is a bad idea. I think that makes sense. Uh, also, um, Bethesda Fountain has been compromised. Oh, yeah, we sent the angel down to, to Washington Square Park. So oh, yeah, we have, uh, but, uh, I don't know if this is for you guys can do this, but we have a bunch of ashes that we recovered of a human remains. Uh, Esther takes those nods. Um, One of them's cocaine. I made a mistake, <laughs> but we don't know that. Um, uh, yeah, you see, Esther takes him says, I'll take a look into this. For those of you that uh, need to rest, you should go ahead and rest. Pete, if you want to stay with Alejandro. I think I have to see my brother maybe tomorrow. Did I say I was going to see him tomorrow? You didn't specify a time. Well, I'd like to see him. So I think I'm going to head back to Staten Island. Cool. You head back to Staten Island. You're staying at the Chantry. What's everybody else doing? I want to mention something to... I just want to kind of pull Esther aside for a second and be like, uh, hey, I know this is kind of weird, but uh, do you still see your mom? Do you, uh, do you talk to your mom? What's she up to? How do you know about my mom? Uh, it, we were friends a long time ago. Is she okay? What is... Make a deception, or, or if you're trying to be deceptive. Uh, I don't have... No, I don't need to be deceptive. Yeah. We we were friends, but we're not... Uh, I, we're not friends anymore. You see, she looks at you and says, I haven't seen my mom in a long time. When was the last time you saw her? <sighs> Probably when I was... I don't know. Five, six, even before that, she was in and out. All right. Uh, I walk up and uh, uh, <laughs> and pull out my phone. I'm like, oh, Esther, I was going to send you this picture from the wedding. Uh, it was crazy. It was beautiful. But uh, and then we had to fight some rats or something. Uh, but this is, uh, do, you, do you guys recognize this guy, this old guy in the picture? Um, I don't recognize him, um, but we can take a look. He was, um, he was hanging out with some vampires, and... Hmm. All right. There's a lot of ground to cover. Uh, Ricky, do you want to stay here with me? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. It'd be good to have someone here in case anything goes down, because we don't know what's going to happen with Pete. Um, the rest of you guys, uh, it's getting late. You guys did have a full fight against the yeah. uh, racking. What are you guys up to? I'm good to go. I can go see Willie right now. Cool. You're going to head to Willie. You're going to Staten Island. Yeah. Uh, Misty and Kugresh, what are you guys up to? Um, yeah, I'm going to go back to uh, my apartment. I'm going to uh, probably call my show's director on the way and be like, look, yes, I know I'm missing rehearsal, but this is... Look, darling, I already know the steps. Do it without me. <laughs> Give the understudy a chance to practice. Uh, and then I'll go to the tunnels. Uh, well, the tunnels. I, but I want to let Cug know if you want to come. Oh, I appreciate know. it. I, yeah, I okay. gotta. I'm, I'm good. All cool. right. Rad, you guys all split up, go back to your various places. What was that fucking wisdom saving throw for? It's still late. <laughs> yeah, same. Who rolled poorly on it? I got a one. Oh, ho, ho. Uh, on the wisdom? Or like a four and then a one, yeah. Um, let's see who's the closest to where they're headed. Um, well, Ricky, you're just staying here. So Ricky and Pete are staying at the Clinton Hill Chantry. You see that uh, Alejandro says, um, uh, all right, we get a little pillow for you here, uh, Peter, um, and we have some sleepy time tea for you. That's great. Well. I was going to ask for tea. That's so great. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> Simpatico, huh? All right, here you go. Mm. Uh, and you see, he sa uh, says, no. Be lulled into slumber. I pull out Instagram. I'm like, I'm gonna be up for another hour and a half. <laughs> you see, he says, he says, no, no, no. Be lulled into. One eye goes gold. Slumber. I have immune to sleep related harm. Would this <laughs> yeah. be harm? You see that he stays there and nothing happens to you. And he goes, <laughs> okay, this is very embarrassing for me because that always kind of works. This I'm process, just liking everything. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna try a little, a little harder. 
don't go to sleep. Um, you see, uh, Esther says, let's leave him to yeah. this. Okay. Um, Esther starts walking around with you in the Chantry. Uh, this is sort of, you're spending some like one-on-one time just with downtime with Esther. What's going on in Ricky's head right now? Just like, just, uh, you know, like this is my shot, kind of. <laughs> just uh, like, she's so cool. I'm just thinking of like, just trying to like sound cool. So I was like, man, there's a lot of books in here. I mean, I like to read too. Uh, something about, you know, we have some time in the fire station where I can knock out a book sometimes, so. Uh, <laughs> You see, she sort of smiles and says, really? Yeah, if you have any recommendations for, uh, I mean, I, I guess I don't read a ton, if I'm being like completely honest. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm open to it. Do you it. want it's one like, of these books, Ricky? Would these be sure, fun for you? Sure, what's this one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you pulled a huge book. It's big. Wow. Um, go ahead and give me an Arcana check, if you'd be so kind. Uh, uh, what's my arcana? Uh, well, I rolled a three, so probably, <laughs> yeah, three. It is written in a language you do not speak. You have no <laughs> fucking idea what Amazing. this is. Amazing. Wow. Uh, make a, Each make page a, is, the letters are this. <laughs> <laughs> make a persuasion check for me if you're so kind. Okay. Uh, 18. 18. Uh, you see that Esther kind of leans against the table and like bites her finger, at, like trying to like stifle. She's like trying not to be mean. She goes, would you like me to uh, walk you through this book that you've shown such That'd a- That'd be awesome, honestly. <sighs> okay, so this is a book of axioms. Do you know what an axiom is? No. So there's different references to it. It means a different thing in philosophy, for example, than it okay. means in arcana. In arcana, an axiom refers to basically a law a rule of magic. Cool. You've opened up to a page which is actually very pertinent for casting magic in New York. It's the imperial axiom. Imperial empire. Ax- oh, empire rule. Yeah, the empire right? rule. Oh, yeah. Uh, you see that uh, she's walking along. Um, uh, give me an insight check, by the way. Uh, eight. Uh, eight, cool. You're kind of going around a little bit of like a sense of something tingles, like a little bit of like your divine sense tingles as you're walking through a room. Um, she looks at you and says, she's just kind of like babbling on and being like, uh, she goes like, so the imperial axiom basically states, you see she looks at the book and says, uh, because of the extreme difficulty of creating a permanent magical effect within the tumultuous arcane landscape of New York, an object or enchantment which is abjured or ensorcelled from being crafted, conjured, or created. Yes. Keep going, sorry. No, it's all right. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, Object or enchantment, which is abjured or ensorcelled from being crafted, conjured, or created in a given location, can be crafted, conjured, or created in its abjured locality if it is first crafted, conjured, or created within the five boroughs of New York City. Uh, And that's the imperial axiom, also sometimes known as Sinatra's Law. Oh. um, So... I didn't understand that. I'm going to be honest, but uh, it sounds it sounded awesome the if, way you said it. If a magical effect or object is barred or or I'm trying to think, there's lots of things that you can't do in certain places or uh-huh. certain with for certain reasons. They're abjured, they're barred, they're warded. Da, 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 da. Uh, however, because of the imperial axiom, if you are able to create or conjure that magical effect or object within the five boroughs of New York City, you can then conjure, craft, or create it within the place that it is normally barred from being crafted or created. So it's just kind of an interesting law of magic. There's tons of these that we have to learn and know about. It's like a loophole. It's a little loophole, but I mean, this whole library is full of loopholes. Uh, you look up and get a really weird sense. You're looking at a giant map of the five boroughs of New York City, except that the highways on the map are in this sort of pulsing red. Mm-hmm. Um, and your divine sense kind of tingles a little bit. Uh, so what's the deal with, with this uh, glowing map? Glowing map? Why don't you, you, you tell me what you think. Give me another Arcana check. <laughs> what do you think it is? Well, so these are the highways, right? Yeah. And they're glowing. So that's, uh, the traffic's really bad right now, it seems like. <laughs> it's bad see, everywhere. Uh, it's give, me another, give me another persuasion check. Two. Uh, wait, five? <laughs> Twenty. Five. Uh, do it with advantage. Jeez, I'll give dice. you a little inspiration here. 
Okay, 16. <laughs> uh, you see that she just busts out laughing, and she says, I'm sorry, I'm really not trying it's to not be an traffic. asshole. Okay. It's not traffic. No, it's not traffic. Oh, I didn't feel are... like it was traffic. No, it's not traffic. That's a good guess. That is actually a good guess. Uh, this is what we, the loose term we have for it is the highway hex. Um, basically, <sighs> Unlike the subways and the bus routes that run basically with the grain of ley lines here in New York, a lot of the highways seem to run against it. And it actually creates kind of the tumultuous arcane effect that we were talking about when we were talking about the Imperial Axiom. Um, you know, the BQE, uh, the Major Deegan, a lot of these highways end up creating pathways of energies that dilute ley lines, which makes teleporting into and out of New York very difficult. It, it basically makes us a little bit more isolated. So it's like um, interference. It's exactly right. It's like interference. Nice. <laughs> cool. Okay. You see that she says, absolutely. So why, so this is just a map explaining that that exists? Well, we don't understand a lot about it. We don't know. <sighs> We're trying to figure it out as well. You know, a lot of these things, you see she gets sort of a sad look in her face. She says, a lot of these things are sort of like a work in progress. Does it have anything to do with the amount of people going back and forth? That's part of it. Yeah. The traffic actually does a lot of the work of energy because obviously people have an inherent magic in them. Even a person that can't see the unsleeping city still has a heart and a soul. The, you know, Kingston, your friend, gets his magic from real people every day. Mm. Wow. You better, wow. you see, it looks and says, you're like, stunned. she says, I've been up for more than a day, so I think I'm gonna hit the hay. Let me show you your place. Awesome, yeah. Uh, she takes you to a little bunk in the chantry. Uh, she says, uh, there should be shampoo and towels and stuff if you need it. Um, let me know if you need anything else. Okay, uh, thanks. And hey, uh, I appreciate the scholarly effort. Thanks, it's really hard for me. <laughs> yeah. she, she, she looks like her heart breaks and she says, I always thought you were a bit of a uh, macho kind of guy and you, I'm grateful that you ran into the fire and saved us all, but that's sort of the kind of thing oh. that guys like you do. No, no offense. Oh, you don't take it. You see, she looks and says, you trying to learn that stuff really is brave, and I'm not downplaying that. Thanks, I um, appreciate that. Then I just take off my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make an inside check. <laughs> uh, oh, I got an eight. Um, uh, she makes some kind of expression on her face and says, have a good night, Rick, and <laughs> walks away down the hallway. Uh, uh, great, uh, we're, gonna, uh, we're gonna cut over to uh, our man Kingston Brown. Uh, Kingston, uh, it's a short walk actually from here to Williamsburg. Uh, so you walk dead of night, one o'clock in the morning. Uh, uh, What's going on in Kingston's head as he walks to Williamsburg? I think it's just a lot of, like, sp trying to put the pieces together of, like, this Bethesda fountain bullshit, that weird man at that fucking wedding. Man, what's going on? What happened to the New York that I love? I mean, I still love New York, but goddamn, we're doing okay, and then Pete shows up. I mean, he's a good kid, but come on, man. <laughs> Everything seems to be going, who's this great baby? Alejandro's smoking again? Give me an yeah. investigation check. <laughs> great. Uh, 19. Uh, you know where you need to head. You go down by the waterfront, like Kent. Uh, you're, you can look across the river and see Manhattan. Uh, you're walking up. Uh, you start to walk through this old neighborhood. Uh, it's like southern Williamsburg near the water. Um, it's late at night. There's a lot of families in this neighborhood, so hardly any uh, noise of anything happening. And you begin to hear a lumbering. Uh, you round a corner uh, and you look and see an eight foot tall brick hulking golem. Uh, you see that the golem's eyes glow. And you see that it is digging through pavement for something. Turns around. Eyes glow. 
looks over at you. What you looking for, Willie? Kingston Brown from up top. Oh, uh, what's going on, man? I see. Puts a hand up and whoa, goes down. <laughs> <laughs> brings you in for a big hug. Mm -hmm. Says, "You look good, Kingston Brown." Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate it. you. Don't look bad yourself. Redder than normal. I says, "Well, oh, what's going on? I saved some rust from being down in the scrapyards. Uh -huh. uh, there are a couple of trolls that come by to bother. Would a Michigan city took all of a week to find them all?" Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey, that's tough, man. But how you doing? You you living well? You good? I live by the might of gold. I am happy to be animated still. You're looking thin, you eat things still these days. I, you know, my mom was trying to get me to eat more, but you know, I mean, just between work and more work and then the city and all this shit, you know, I just, you know, I'm, it's hard to make time. I, I, you know, I made a salad tonight and I didn't even get to eat all of it because I had to come down here. <laughs> if you want, we should go buy a bakery somewhere. I can move. You see that his bricks integrate with a wall next to him? I can move through the wall, grab maybe a bagel, a shmi, or some locks. What do you want? I mean, yeah, yeah, I think, a, yeah, no, uh, no locks, just bagel schmear. He nods, <clears throat> starts lumbering down the street. He says, by the way, there is a nest of D-books nearby here. They are spectral, so hard for me to smash them. Uh -huh. You mind to take a look? Yeah, of course. Well, you, sorry, you got to say that again. You know, sometimes, you know, your br the lack of a tongue and the fact that your mouth is mostly bricks. I have what, I should have a tongue made No, of I'm not saying you got to have a tongue. I'm not saying you got to have a tongue, Willie. Why did you come down here to beat me Willie, really, I did not tongue. come down here to fight with you about whether or not you have a tongue, all right? I can tell you for a fact I thought I should be so lucky to have a tongue. Uh-huh, okay. Uh, you see, you go down the street, you get to a bakery, you see that he melds with the brick wall, disappears for a second, and comes back out. The bricks open up in his chest, and you see a nice toasted everything bagel with a schmear on it. Ooh. Oh, thank you, Willie. This looks delicious. Uh, think nothing of it. It's important you have to stay fed. Yeah. Wait, so what are you going to say? There are a nest of D-Bucks uh, possessing spirits that are nearby. Would you mind just... Yeah, of course, happy to. Uh, he takes you around the corner. You see for sure there's a hive in an old gutter of a building of just like some very minor undead spirits that are hanging out there. Uh, I cast turn undead or destroy undead? Uh, yeah, you raise your hand. Um, uh, what do you say to this nest of Dybbuk as you see it? All right. Get out of here, you, <laughs> you damn Dybbuk. <laughs> see, they all <laughs> fly away. And don't come back. Kingston, what a mitzvah. I appreciate you taking the time. Of course, man. I'm happy to help. What? Now, I, you know, I, I wouldn't come down here at 1 a.m. just to say hello. You know? <laughs> I, you know, I love a good bagel, but it's late and I should be sleeping. But I wanted to ask you, uh, what's going on with uh, Lazarus? Lazarus? Yeah. Oh, uh, some... Christian schmuck in the Bible, I think. What should I know for? Well, I mean, it's just, we got something going on. You know that gray baby? Gray baby. You know the gray baby? The gray baby. Why should the baby be gray? Take the baby to the hospital. The baby I, is hey, you're talking, to a, you're talking to a nurse, all right? I know, I know what a gray baby is. Why should I know Baby something? should not be gray. Anyway, there's, you know, you know Nod, right? Lord, yes, I know. I am a creature, of course, of the waking world. Yeah. Well, there's something going down with Nod, and there's this gray baby that just keeps talking on and on about Lazarus. And, you know, uh, me and Alejandro and some of the other people were talking. And we were like, who here knows about this religious stuff? So, we, I, so I thought to come to you. So this something in the room you mean, told you about this what? Lazarus from the Bible. Yes, because, oh, well, the other thing I forgot to mention is, you know Santa Claus, right? Santa Claus got his list stolen, and you know that both Satan and St. Peter have been using that same list, so. <laughs> what a mess. Okay, Willie, we don't need to get into all of this Christian versus Jewish stuff, all right? We got uh, business you said it, not me, I okay. would just say. Uh, uh -huh. All right, well, do you know anything about Lazarus, or is there anything you've heard, any rumblings? Lazarus. 
Are you sure this is the Lazarus from the Bible? Well, you got another Lazarus I should be looking into? You see, he looks out over the water, beautiful snow across the water of the East River, and looks out at the uh, Statue of Liberty. No, there. And the Lazarus. No, there is a woman. There was a woman once, Emma Lazarus. She wrote the poem inscribed in that fine, beautiful woman's book. <sighs> the Statue of Liberty. I'm sorry, Willie. Are you trying to you trying to get it all with the Statue of Liberty? What a golden country! I'm not saying the. I, I just didn't, we've never talked about ladies before. I just didn't know. Well, what do you know? You wise old wooden. Oh, 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 okay. You want to bring that up? You no, know, you know I'm actually, just saying. You oh, you just saying. All right. Listen, I don't mean to fight. Let's look. You're a man. You come down. You help me with the books. I'm happy to answer your question. I'm just saying. You tell me that it's not a fetching statue. Okay, if a statue could, I'm, I'm personally not attracted to statues, but sure, that's a beautiful, that could, that's a beautiful. What am I talking about? I'm I'm a handsome statue. Not, okay, I've never, we've never talked about being, a, I, do, I mean, do you think I'm an attractive man? You're a very handsome man. I okay, no fine, you're a very handsome stone golem. The Russian means a lot to me. Hey, well, I'm sorry I didn't say it before. Well, you might start looking for him or Lazarus, Kingston. Hello, my brother. Just good to see you. Hey, thank you very much, Willie Poker, sometime. Oh, please, we miss you from the game. Come by any time. Be there. Give my best to Victoria and Winston. Of course. Have a good night, bro. You see, he nods, smiles, <laughs> heads off down the street, and you got a name. Kingston heads out. Um, uh, this is going to be uh, uh, our friend Sophia. You head okay. back to Staten Island. Mm -hmm. uh, you're on your way back to, I guess, your family's house. Yeah. Uh, make a perception check for me, if you'd be so kind. Mm -hmm. Not 20. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Lost. Just out of the <laughs> leopard box. <laughs> Open my box. Uh, you're heading down the street, and before you can even realize it, you bump face to face with Isabella Infierno. <sighs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Sophia, running into you on the street. How are you doing? So late and you're by yourself. Well, I was out of town and you see she picks up a bag. Uh, it's a bag from David's bridal and it has a wedding dress in it. I vomit. <laughs> 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 um. <clears throat> You know you can't get married until I even see divorce papers. I haven't even gotten divorce papers yet. Oh? If this is about Dale. We don't need to have a legal wedding. A lot of what we do is really off the books. It's just a party for our friends and family to come and celebrate our love. I tear open the thing to see her wedding dress. <laughs> Uh, cool. Make a make a an athletics check for me. <laughs> you win with her. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my God, I got a 22. Uh, you snatch the dress out of her hand. It is the most beautiful gown. I vomit again. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Isabella picks it up and says, oh. Sophie, you're a fucking mess. I wish you the best. And listen, if you really want an invite, I'd be happy to send one your way. I actually would. I just came from a wedding and it was a really beautiful experience. I'm looking to add more to my weekends. <laughs> Assuming you guys can afford getting married on the weekends. Oh. Or are you doing one of those Friday weddings? <laughs> We're doing a destination wedding. Oh yeah? Yeah. Where? We're just gonna... so I know. It says, We're gonna go out all the way to Montauk, have a wedding on the beach. June. Dale hates the beach. Yeah but I love it, and he loves me. <laughs> Bye, Sophie. You see, she walks off down the Just street. Just so you know, I would have never guessed that Dale would do to me what he did to me. So this feeling of confidence and love that you have right now, enjoy it while it lasts. She shrugs, moves on. 
Wow, that's what a nat 20 gets you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm sweating at the palms. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> um, what does Sophie do after that? Sophie had a really specific plan before she ran into <laughs> Isabella and Fierno. Let me see if she can collect herself. Um, I think. Uh, do Go I? Ahead. I think I'm gonna look at my phone and see. I think I'm gonna. Well. I wanted to contact two people, and then I had this really specific thing. I was coming home being like, you know what? I'm going to finally do it. I'm going to go. I'm going to empty the mailbox. I've been avoiding it because I don't want to see his name written on letters. Stuff is still coming here for him. But, you know, I'm feeling empowered by my new friends, so I'm going to finally do it. I don't know if I can now. (laughs) So I might not do that. I am going to... Give me a give me a wisdom save with disadvantage. Okay, with disadvantage. Okay, I got I did get a nat twenty, but I also got a two. Oh, fuck. so wisdom fuck. save is gonna be a uh, five. Sophie needs a drink. Okay. Oh no. All right. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm going to go to the bar. I feel like what I had this really specific plan of what I wanted to do, and I don't know if I can even do it now after that exchange, like role-playing-wise. So, yeah, I guess I'm going to go to the bar, and I take out my phone trying to do what I was planning on doing, Mm -hmm. um, but then instead I'm just going to text Dale. Cool. Uh, You get fucking lit. Uh, What do you text Dale? I think I just say, um... I hope you get sand between your ass cheeks and your fucking beach wedding, you dick. And then I delete it, I delete it, I delete it. (laughs) And then I just say, I wish you the best. And then I send that. I say, I saw Isabella. Um, I wish you the best. Um, And then I order, um, not, I order a shot, but as they're pouring the shot, Mm -hmm. I just take the bottle from them. Uh, you just whoo, grab the bottle. Yeah, you get fucking blasted. Um, I had all this responsible detective work I wanted to God. do, okay. and now it just feels so false for me to do that. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. That, that's the role playing choice. Never mind. That's the role playing choice. Um, Mister, you arrive back at your lovely penthouse, um, and you see a gift there. <gasps> Oh, I love gifts. It's this huge, beautiful silk tarp over some very tall standing, like must be a piece of art or something. I don't even have detect magic. Um, Fuck it, I'll open this present. You whip the silk off and a six foot tall, beautiful standing mirror is here in your apartment. (gasps) Oh. I find the perfect place for it in my room. <laughs> you set it up in your bedroom. Uh, go ahead and give me a charisma saving throw. Uh, Fifteen? Fifteen. You are <gasps> knocked back against the wall. The mirror fills your bedroom with light. You see standing on the other side of the mirror, wreathed in light, is Titania, queen of the fairies. I kneel. It's been such a long time. Oh my God, you look great. Silence! (laughs) All the glassware in your bedroom shatters. That's fine, I I can get other glassware. I'm silent, I'm quiet. My name. My name, you would steal glamour meant for me. You would usurp the glory that was intended for your queen. 400 years ago, you ran away. And just because you hide in a place of iron and smoke does not mean you can deny your queen! Light tears away. Your, like, clothes rend, and your, like, jewelry kind of, like, falls away for a little bit, and you can feel her trying to rip the shoes off your feet. Um... 
Can I cover the mirror back up again? Um, yes, make a make an attack roll to try and cover the mirror up. Um, what what is that? Uh, plus. Dex plus proficiency. Uh, nine, 15 plus proficiency is uh, 18. You grab the silk, uh, hurl it over the mirror, the light fades, um, and you feel uh, one of the bones of your hip break. <gasps> oh. Oh. Damn this stupid body. <laughs> oh. uh, I um, call Kingston. Kingston, uh, on your way back to the subway, you get a, a call from Misty. Oh, I answer it. Kingston, I've 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 had a I've had a bad fall. I, Kingston, <laughs> Kingston, you I, fell? I fell. I, I, my hip. I think I broken my hip. You broke your. Okay. Uh, can you? Okay. Well, can you walk? Or like, of course you can't walk. I, I'm on my way. I'll okay. see you soon. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll I'll tell the doorman to let you in. Great. You rush to Misty's. Uh, you arrive there set the hip in, and probably this is where you're going to have to crash tonight. Can I spend the night, Misty? Is that Please, right? use any one of the guest rooms. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, An apartment with multiple guest uh, rooms. Cugrash, you uh, head back to the sewers. Um, uh, what does Cugrash do as he head back to the sewers? Uh, Just sleeping? Yeah, I think he's feeling... I get, what, time, what time is it right now? Uh, it's like 1 o'clock in the morning. Okay, I think he's kind of had a rough day, and he's gonna kind of try to just find a place to think and go to his little uh, hole in the in the you, tunnels. On your way to the little hole near a subway station, you see a little basket with a bunch of cheese in it, and you see there's a little note on it that says, "Wherever you are, Rat Jesus, know that I love you." <laughs> From Wally. <laughs> uh, I love Wally. Congrash breaks down crying. Oh. And, um, uh, and then, does Wally live nearby? Yeah, Wally lives nearby. I want to go to Wally's house. <laughs> you go to Wally's house. Um, you walk in. Uh, you see it's late at night. Wally's at his kitchen table, a very small little apartment. And you see that he's uh, FaceTiming with his brother. Um, you see he says, um, he goes, David, come on. We, we don't know that he's gone. He might still be missing. You see that... Um, the guy on the other end of the phone is like a sort of businessman looking guy, sort of like his average wearing like a fleece. He goes, Wally, it's late. Look, dad's on some fucking island somewhere. He's never coming back, all right? He's gone. He left us. And you see, Wally says, I don't think he would do that. I, I just, I know it's been a long time. I just don't think he would. He says, look, I gotta go, all right? Take care of yourself, Wally. Come check in anytime. The little FaceTime thing ends. Wally looks up, um, and you see he says, well, at least I got the Christmas card. He puts a little Christmas card up on his fridge from David and David's wife and the kids, and it says, Merry Christmas from the Kugriches. Uh, Wally goes, all right, time to go to bed. Gotta brush my teeth, though. <laughs> Starts brushing his teeth. Okay. He's <laughs> on the blanket. Fuck. <laughs> I think I'm going to, uh, I think Kugrash isn't ready to uh, confront Wally right now, but I want to give him a good sign. So I do that, like, Santa, like that parent Santa thing. I eat the cheese and I leave it out on like a plate and uh, I just write on a note, a uh, rat Jesus loves you. Uh, uh, and I'm, I'm watching you. Uh, I'm watching uh, And then I say, in not a creepy way. <laughs> oh, so heartbreaking. And then Kograsch uh, goes and sleeps in the sewers. Pete, Kograsch, you, enter, you enter the dreaming. Uh, what does Pete do once he enters the dreaming? Uh, he's probably having just some like weird dream that's like similar to life, but mm -hmm. yeah, like he's probably like making a deal. You are making a deal. You're in like a beautiful neighborhood. Uh, you see that there's a cool guy with like a little handlebar mustache. Someone's riding a fixie around. There's cool coffee shops and stuff like that. Selling some drugs. 
Um, you see that uh, one of the people turns to look at you and says, oh, hey man, you're Pete the Plug, right? Hmm? You're Pete the Plug, right? Are you gonna hook us up? Yeah, yeah, what do you, uh, what do you guys need? Um, well, we'd love to, I think, like, get out, I think. Totally, Do you have yeah. anything to help us, like, get out? Yeah, 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 let me see. Uh, I, like, pull out some mushrooms, and I'm like, yeah, this? Are you gonna go, like, camping or something, or? We've always wanted to go to New York. <laughs> These mandibles extend and start clicking, and you see that all the people around here begin to turn insectoid. They take your mushrooms, start passing them out, and around you, a rip in the dreaming opens, and you see a neighborhood in New York City, and these things begin to fly out. They become surrounded by the Umbral Arcana, and you see that they are headed into real New York City. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> and they begin to storm in. You snap awake uh, as quick as you can on the table. It is morning. Okay. Uh, I find Alejandro. Alejandro's there. <gasps> Peter, what did you see? Okay. Uh, okay. I was in, uh, uh, I was probably in like Williamsburg or something. And uh, these people needed, wanted to get out. And I gave them mushrooms. And then they said, thank you. They all turned into insects and ripped a hole and left and got out and went into an actual place in New York. You let them out? Yeah, in the dream. I was just Peter, selling. what you do in the dream matters. I, I don't know. I was just doing what I would normally do in the day-to-day. -day. What you would normally do they is... They didn't even give me money. <laughs> yeah. You see, he boom, mm -hmm. opens up a window. You see that he's doing a clairvoyance spell onto a neighborhood. You hear screams. Ah! You see this. My God. My God, I, 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 you see, he, he says, I must run and find Esther. G collect your friends. These people are in danger. Fuck. What's Pete do? It sends out like a mass text. Do uh, I have you guys' You number? wake up hungover. You wake up in the chantry upstairs. You wake up in, in Missy's apartment. You wake up in the sewers. Uh, there's trouble. You see it's right next to the Steinway subway stop. And uh, you guys all know where to go. Start right. running there. You guys. Rush to the subway stop uh, in wait, various. Wait, how come I can't rush? I've just broken my hip. Uh, your hip has uh, Kingston does I some use magic to heal. Yeah. 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 We're gonna do this in a normal He's way. Not a regular yeah. doctor. You guys rush, all nuts. get on the subway. Uh, Kingston, you give a little bit of help getting that subway there extra quick, and boom, you guys rush up out of the subway steps and hear the chittering of strange insects. I'm gonna need everybody here to roll initiative. Roll well, in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all for this week on The Unsleeping City. Tune in next week and see what's bugging our intrepid heroes. I hate bugs. <laughs> You guys rush up out of the subway. The buildings are covered in horrifying, gross webs. A wasp centaur. <laughs> giant fucking beetle monster. I'm gonna eat them all dead. I summon you, my babies. Defend your true king, you pieces of shit. You hear muffled screams. <laughs> what the fuck is in there? I hate this. Those guys are fucking going up in flames. <laughs> Just try if I can touch me with a 25, bitch! When this bug tramples you! The bug! Next. Oh!